also recently heard that a lot of non-Aboriginal companies are getting Aboriginal Pacific funding. Um, how, what's your perspective on how we can rebalance this distribution so that that we're actually empowered um, to empower our own communities? Because it seems like a lot of this funding is going to providers that may not be delivering a culturally appropriate service or something like that. What's your perspective? Swap. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's a great question. <laughs> um, that, something like, I, 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 can, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, and that's going to take a bit of time to actually infiltrate that and to ensure. I've already seen it. Um, the, the you know government are looking at their spend around consortiums, so they're not just having one organisation involved. And effectively, you're having three or four organised Aboriginal organisations who get access to the funding and deliver the programs. So I can see that's already recently there's been a case like that here in Perth. And I think that's really, um, that is the way forward because we've already spoken about we want to be able to work Noongar to Noongar. Well, that funding could go to Noongar to Noongar. And that's going to be a process of, of time, I think. It's a bit like you know, we're having light bulb moments about engagement. You know, well, the next stage of that is actually you know, putting the money into where it should be going, hopefully. Um, yeah, so that's a challenge. It is a challenge. But um, you just got to keep putting your foot on it, and that's you know that's certainly what I'll be doing anyway. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I'd say on that is um, I went to the Close the Gap refresh review that occurred in Canberra, and the, the overwhelming response by everybody in the room to government is do things with us, not for us. You're bound to fail if you think you're coming in with all the answers. We know the answers. Um, so if you don't want to see this gap closed, keep doing what you're doing because you're just going to keep failing. If you want to see it closed, have some meaningful engagement with our people, bring them on and let them empower them to lead the initiatives that they're trying to put in place. I think there's an opportunity uh, for corpora Aboriginal corporations to really take a lead because uh, for the first time in history, there's actually some punch in terms of funding, and I know it's very uneven across corporations. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have resources on your land or unlucky enough, um, now of course that brings in, in funds. And certainly from our board perspective, but their view is we don't want anything from government. We will build a corpus to a point where it will yield enough funding to drive major projects and programs that is determined by us. And uh, so it's kind of a, you know, uh, yeah, so when you talk about government funding, now of course we would always look for partnerships and real, genuine, equal partnerships, but uh, it, it's actually, you know, we're, we're, we're at the table and, and can have some real influence. Maria? I was just going to make a uh, comment rather than ask a question. And in terms of um, service providers, the way I like to think about it is that the service provider should also have an exit strategy. Um, to be a good service provider, I think it's about being ultimately redundant, making yourself redundant. I mean, I think that's the best measure of whether you've had an impact, whether you've collaborated well, whether you've listened well, and whether you've genuinely provided um, a good service. You then, that need or that issue um, that was there shouldn't be there anymore. Um, I mean, you can say that, I guess, simplistically, but ultimately it's about a redundancy, a redundancy approach, collaborating, transferring skills, and then moving on to the next thing. And it could be in a long-term relationship with that, that community or that corporation, or it could be um, somewhere else. So I, um, I agree with that. The, you know, some of the things that we're looking at is um, social enterprise and looking at that space. Um, we know sustainability really comes around business, so we need, we're looking strongly at that sort of stuff as well. Um, we too want to be you know, self-determined. We want to have our own bank, we're going to have that. But effectively, you've got to go and it's, it's a beginning process for us about um, pushing our way into things like you know, the 3% um, gosh, what's it called for me now? Yeah? Procurement. Procurement policy which will be 2020 when that happens. So it's actually actually been able to 
had capacity to deliver in that space and take those contracts. So it is, um, for me, it looks like a, a beginning process and all that sort of stuff as well, because we don't want to be reliant on government 100%. Um, you raise a really good point, and, and, and it's something for service providers not to be frightened about that handing over. Because guess what? There's lots of other work to be done. You move on to the next project. If there's been a good relationship and good outcomes, uh, we, we want you to do now the next piece of work that we don't yet have the capability or capacity to do. Uh, there is plenty of work around because one piece goes doesn't mean another. And that's the, the underlying principle of, of aid to our developing countries is the same is building capability at a, a price that the country can afford, not Australian prices, but the country can afford, do yourselves out of a job. Does that mean Australia withdraws? Of course not. There's a hundred other things that uh, that country is requesting help with. It's the same principle. Good question. Time for two more questions. Uh, firstly, thank you for your valuable insights. It's really refreshing to hear such honest and um, frank feedback from the heart. So thank you for that. Um, my question really is about um, how do we, you've mentioned sort of succession planning and, and upskilling and governance training. What are your thoughts on how you actually engage, <coughs> excuse me, and empower the young members of your community to, who are the, the future generation or the future directors and CEOs of your corporations? How do you sort of engage them now um, and expose them to this corporate governance so that one day they can sort of step up um, to, the, to those roles? Um, with great difficulty. Because the, the, because the, the story's been going for, for so long and we do operate right across every community in, in a gerontocracy. And that's exactly where we are with our mob. We rely heavily on our eldership. And there's always a, a speak of um, the young fellows will get their turn. But it's very hard. It's, it's difficult for me being in the middle of that is to try and connect it because it's, it's so disconnected, in a sense. And that's something we're working really hard on. And, but it's not something that can't be done. And Tali is here, she's one of those young people. But, and they and future leader. So that's, you know, we know they're out there. Um, we need to offer our support more to that group to ensure that they are well placed to take on. We spoke on Saturday, I ran a workshop with Malcolm, one of my senior staff and others to a new group of nominee directors. And we've got some young people in there too. But the discussion is there, how do we introduce our young fellows into that space as well and get them ready? So we're acutely aware of it. It's just trying to build the bridge. It's really, it's not an easy thing. Our youth are very dynamic. They're very sharp. They're technologically savage, way past me. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes they don't even think about the politics of what's going on. So they've got a lot to offer. Um, whereas a lot of us are stuck in the baggage of politics. They're, they're not. So a lot of them, what I'm seeing is, we don't want that, but hey, we'll bring all this other stuff and we can do all that. And maybe we don't need you to do that. So that's the sort of thing we have to break down. Yeah. I've just been having this discussion uh, at board level and uh, the, the concern about succession planning and how to engage young people, not only in the governance and, and future leaders, uh, but around heritage and law and, and so forth and that disconnect, you know, continuing disconnection. And uh, yeah, it was interesting. I sort of observed that there's uh, um, elders want things done the way it's supposed to be done. And, and there's a, it, it's not just a cultural disconnect, but a generational disconnect. Like any of you out there who've got kids, you know, there's a different way to engage. To engage at, at the age we are, versus that. So I think there's some innovation uh, possibilities around engaging youth, knowing how youth gets engaged. Forget about what we ever want to get them to, but what are the modes of getting youth engaged in things? And uh, you know, Wayne touched on it. Uh, some of that will be around digital technology and all, and, and some, you know, there's some fascinating you know, opportunities around there. And it's just to get them interested, because to, to you know, some of the, the, the young men to go out to a law ground for a week and, and, and all, you know, and the sun and the heat and all that, it's not necessarily an attractive option. Uh, but how do you get to the point where they will be interested and take great pride in that? Uh, um, um, yeah, so it's, it's, so it's engaging younger people to help get other younger people uh, in. And this, uh, I'm always amazed. I mean, I think the stats are something like, on average, 
an Aboriginal leader is at least 10 years younger than the general leader in the community. The you know, leadership thrust on people at such a young age and the pressures and so on, and we've seen you know, awful, uh, you know, the worst of suicide or whatever through the pressures of, of that you know, at a very young age. So, um, but we need to, need to use young people to engage other young people. Nicholas has been dying to ask. Go, Nick. Thanks.